Yo, welcome back. Here's a humble bundle review, the Mega Game Dev Asset and Tools Bundle. It's £26.90 for all 40 items. It comes with some game systems that we'll take a look at. There's some animations that we'll also take a look at and a few environments. We'll take a look at those as well. Now I have brought this so you don't have to. So I'll give you my honest review, see if this is a must buy or a skip and give you a score at the end for how I feel about it. You let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. And if you're going to pick it up, then if you would use my affiliate link, then that gives the channel a little bit of kickback as well. And that would be super appreciated. So the reason that I brought this one is I like systems. These type of systems are meant to be really good. There's a few environments here that I'm interested in and animations as well. And then the essential VR hands looks like a really quite a unique asset to pick up as well. There are some problems with all of these as a bundle as a whole, and I'll let you know what they are as we go on. The first one is that not all of these are new. So they might be new to you, but they've not been new on the Humble Bundle store before. So anything that doesn't have a first time on Humble Bundle hasn't been new. And then the second thing is you, you do not get individual asset codes for these to redeem on Fab. So you have to redeem them on the Liartis website. Right, so you'll need a Cosmos uh, code. And once you have one, you come down, you click on redeem, enter the code that it gives you. And then if you want them on Fab, you click on each asset and get a redeem code for fab so before we dive into it there's a couple of things to note and these are uh, downsides first one is these essential vr hands well they don't exist anymore so we've raised a uh, ticket about these to say what's going on and these punishment motions a little while ago they also did not uh, exist but this seems to have been fixed so let me put the email on the screen for you now well, we'll have a look at Warm Christmas. It seems to be on festive point. And then we've put a few of the hero animations in here. Just the resting one. I've got playing guitar on a bench. This is cozy. And then farewell on in. There is a very mature joke coming up in three, two, one. All nice and cozy over here. And then suddenly. Uh, so whoever was choosing this bundle, put a Valentine's Day bundle in there with cozy Merry Christmas and punishment animations. And so I thought this was hilarious. Right, joke over. Uh, let's take a look at some of these proper animations and packs. So this was Warm Christmas. Let's take a look at the hero animations in full. So here we are with our hero animations. There's lots of uh, sort of sitting, meditating, campfire stuff, uh, both for the UE4 skeleton and for the UE5 skeleton. I thought this guy was like rocking backwards and forwards, just having a bad time. This guy's not having a great time. He's seen he's seen some stuff. And then over here, we've got the uh, Kumbaya Brigade, all just having a little sing song around the campfire. There's Quinn Sheeran, got Harry No Styles. Feel free to drop uh, silly dad jokes in the comments. I'm gonna come on to something I was super excited about, and I was I was like really excited for Robot Wars. If you're a 90s kid like me, then Robot Wars, you grew up with that. Matilda, Sergeant Bash. Like, I thought we could make a cool little Robot Wars fighting game. But these are just static meshes, and they don't even import with the textures. So it's really annoying. Like The materials don't even work on them properly. This may as well have been a free asset, sadly. So this is the flywheel one. I'm sure if it gets fixed, it'll be very good. But right now, it's not. And then the throw up one is even worse. The throw up one has two robots in, but they're not doing anything. So none of the textures. So now I've got to split out these robots in a separate software and make them have a skeleton so I can flip them up. I, oh, it's disappointing. Very disappointing. So here we are in the punishment pack. Got all kinds of different uh, punishments. Doing some uh, head lobbing. This is quite nice, actually. Let's see, as you can see, different punishments. Next snap in. These are a little bit mature. Little bit graphic. Right, next. Uh, let's look at the actual full Valentine's Day map. Because why not? Because it's Christmas, right? 
but everyone thought I was taking the mic when I put all these balloons in here. But no, this was actually provided. Valentine's Day. Also a flyable drone inside this map as well. Now bear in mind that this noise is horrible. So I'm going to turn it on so you can hear it. And then I'm turning off the noise because it's disgusting. So there you go. Flyable drone in here. You can see it moving around. The noise does change with the pitch of going up and down. Um, so that is very nice. But that is the most grating sound I've ever heard. At the sedan vehicle, which is a car asset. Doesn't give you a drivable map, but gives you an idea of what the car asset is. And again, all of these are static mesh. But at least these are split and usable with the wheels and stuff, brake pads, etc. And you can get a skeletal mesh as well that's rigged with the uh, sedan too. So don't hate this one. I would like a bit of a map to give it a play around, see what's what, but you need to enable chaos for all of this to work but gives you an idea of the type of car that you could have swim pool is swim time i know a lot of people enjoy the uh back rooms type stuff it's not it's not for me but i know a lot of people do enjoy that type of thing turn down the lights make it creepy we've got some dressing rooms in here as well hyper menu system this is what it looks like i've turned the sound on for this because it comes with its own sounds which is nice here you are with it play settings credits all this now this does use common ui which is one of uh my bugbears with it and i'll explain that more in a sec but we'll just go for it so a credit scene that scrolls nice settings menu nothing is pre-programmed in terms of the language but it does save it i changed this to the netherlands before uh, and it changed the language so if we apply the changes those are saved which is nice but it doesn't like change the settings here music volume is affected which is very good and then we have a key binding thing on here as well so there's some very good uh, stuff here presets and frame rates and all of this and it all seems to be uh, programmed as well so when we turn the sound effects down, we stop hearing the fire. When we turn the music down, we stop hearing the music. Uh, it's all good. And this is really nice. It changes. We can hear the sound effects in the background. It is a solid menu. Now for the two downsides for everything hyper for the first one. So for everything hyper, it is very much within hyper's ecosystem. So here you've got a dialogue system, there's a building system, an inventory locomotion, all of this stuff. But just for a main menu, that's excessive to be brought in. And I kind of get it, like they all, it's to help you when you buy all the other stuff and everything else. But just for a main menu, that that's a lot. And then secondly, in terms of the actual menu itself, it uses common UI, which is, yeah, a superior format to UI, but does require you to learn common UI as a new starter. So. This isn't a basic implementation. And I don't believe anything that Hyper does is a basic level. You should have more of a basic understanding of blueprints before you buy one of these systems. So we'll take a look and see what else is around. But this, as a whole, this main menu system is really tight and really nice. But I don't think it's for new starters. So here we are in the inventory system. And this is on the 5.7 update on here. So we've got items that you can pick up. For whatever reason, the uh, interaction radius is really weird. These run on a spear radius and I'm definitely within the spear, but you've got to be at a certain angle to pick these up. But I can pick that one up and I'm miles away. So, yeah, there's a bit of a weirdness here. If we press I, we get inventory. This has a decay system similar to Dragon's Dogma. You can right click and you get access to all the splits and the drops and everything. It's a bit sensitive on the uh, UI. So, like, if you just come off a little bit, it'll disappear. So, I can see that being really annoying. So, I'm definitely on it now. And then come off. 
So maybe wrapping this with a nice border so that you get a little bit of leeway on this uh, would help. But it's a very nice system to use. You also get access to these storage containers and you can drag and drop. People like drag and drop inventories. I don't care for them personally, but... And then we can set up the initial slots. So the actual paperwork on this is relatively good. And it uses the decay system, as I say, Dragon's Dogma type thing. But again, this uses common UI and it faces the same problem of uh, being really integrated into all the other systems as well. Just to prove my point. If we look in the actual core of the system, so inventory, blueprints, inventory advanced. Here we're trying to return the crafting component on here. And yeah, it's an abstract, so they can give you the abstract and the abstract's empty and then the children inherit from it. But it's just extra that like bogs down your blueprint that you don't you don't want or need. There's a hot bar in here that you don't get and there's just a lot of systems that aren't that you'll need to yank out to get it to be clean or you can leave them in and run with them they're not causing a huge amount of issue but i like my stuff to only process the logic that i want it to process i think that's maybe just a personal thing but it's a very good system and that's my bugbear with it so we'll take a look inside the uh, auto landscape material tool. So you can see we've got a distance culling on our grass here. And then when we sort of zoom in, we can see that uh, there's all this uh, grass. And now if I put a mountain in or a hill, it automatically adjusts using a landscape material. So then it puts cliffs in and all sorts of that. So it's quite nice. This isn't uh, locked behind any sort of special fancy stuff. A good understanding of uh, like auto landscape materials would be useful just so you can adjust it and make it how you want it. But the auto runtime stuff is really quite powerful as well. So we like this. We've got different uh, settings inside the material instance. And this is why I sort of mean that you want to have a good understanding of materials here to just change these around. But as a basic tool, this is fine if you just want to use it for grass and snow and cliffs this will work out the box for you which is quite nice we can flatten some of these around and change this about so now i've got this massive area just here so i don't really do much with landscapes and uh, level design it's not really my bag but i can see how this would be super powerful and super useful really powerful tool and yeah easy to use Right, let's take a look at PCG splines. We get blueprint splines in here that run on construction script, and then we get PCG splines that you have to generate as well. There's also a decoil spawner for paths. And yeah, this is a system that doesn't... I've managed to get myself stuck. This is a system that doesn't run on anything else, so you can use this sort of out of the box, which is more my speed and what I want and after. It's super easy you grab one of these spine points you press alt that creates a new one and then you can drag it out to go where you want it to go so for whatever reason i've gone over here because i've grabbed the wrong thing and then you can move it back and move it around and all sorts and that's the blueprint one the pcg one's a little different so we can do the same thing grab alt get a new spine but then we have to come to details select pcg and select generate because this is taking all of the information from the ground for the height and everything like that. But this is a bit more complicated and complex. See how this one's floating. If I did this here and then over here. So this should now in theory float, but PCG should make it not do that. So PCG makes it not do that and not put anything in the sky because it's rotated towards the ground or it's trying to find the ground I should say so you can come and do fun stuff like this as a broken one and mess with it whereas this you wouldn't really be able to do that without some extra setup 
Okay, so there's a difference here. I think this is very good. I think it's advanced for the PCG stuff. I think for the basic stuff, you'll be fine. But as a learning tool, I think this is a very powerful system. So where do I fall on the Lee Artists uh, Game Dev Mega Game Dev Bundle? I think that the systems you get are fantastic. They are slightly overinflated in price. So for instance, this one says that MSRP is two hundred and fifty dollars. That's for the pro license. Like the basic personal license that I would be getting is 62 quid so i would say that these are potentially a little bit overinflated and using the old salesman's tactic so this value here yes it's for the pro license but you wouldn't be buying the pro license if you brought them anyway so the saving isn't actually as much as what it is it's still way more than 26 pound 90 but it's it's a little bit disingenuous for where we are as indies in terms of the actual animations, I like them. I think they're good and they're accurate, which is really nice. A bit frustrating having to chase them to fix stuff and these VR hands not being there at all. I can see people being really disappointed about that, which is upsetting. Honestly, that should be fixed and I've raised a ticket for that. The flyable planes, uh, the usable cars, all the environments, I think they're very good. I'm never bothered about this junk, three month subscription, etc., etc and the 50 percent off robot war stuff super disappointed charging 35 quid for what is actual not good at all well i mean that's not where they get the 35 from because that's eight to ten so god knows and that's my opinion i think 7.5 to 8 on this is a good uh, setup probably closer to the 7.5 than it is to the 8 for me maybe a 7 but let me know what you think are you going to get this one I hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next one.